Now to some news that will excite a lot of fans in the Northwest. Wednesday, the Seattle Mariners signed first ballot Hall of Famer Ken Griffey Jr. to a one-year deal through the 2011 season. Griffey, who turns 40 on November 21st, will be coming back for his 22nd Major League season and will be the fourth player in Major League history to play for a single franchise in his teens, 20s, 30s, and 40s. Griffey's career has spanned across four different decades. Talk about longevity. It's been said that Griffey had a tremendous impact on the Mariners' turnaround last season and helped Ichiro break out of his shell. Griffey ranks fifth on Major League Baseball's career home run list with 630. Now, Riley, a lot of Seattle fans are excited. <laughs> I'm not from Seattle. I realize how much Griffey means to the city, but productivity-wise, is he worth the money they're spending? You know, when there's guys out there like Hideki Matsui, who I think might be a better fit for Seattle, I don't quite see the whole Ken Griffey Jr. when it comes to productivity. Yeah, maybe in the clubhouse he'd be fine, but why not bring him back as a coach instead? Something to think about. Switching gears, the New Orleans Hornets fired head coach Byron Scott today, just nine games into the 2009-2010 season. Scott was rumored to be on the hot seat after the Hornets were knocked out of the first round of last year's playoffs. Scott, who is only two years removed from winning the NBA Coach of the Year honors, was fired four years was fired after four years as the head coach, posting a 203 and 216 record over that time. Scott will be replaced by Hornets general manager Jeff Bowen, who thought who brought recently resigned USC coach Tim Floyd with him to the coaching staff. Now let's talk about something of more importance: Cougar football. Let's pick things up from Tucson now, where the Cougars were looking to pull off a huge upset against the top 20 team, and Arizona put that to rest early. The opening kickoff taken by Travis Cobb and he finds a hole and knows what to do with it. 95 yards to the house, untouched to put the Wildcats up 7 to nothing. Very early putting the Cougars down. First possession for the Arizona offense, just as successful as the opening kickoff. Quarterback Nick Foles throws a beautiful fade to Terrell Turner for a 28-yard touchdown. Arizona was up 14 to 0, just three minutes into the game. Third quarter now after WSU's offense stalled what seemed like all day and went three and out to start the second. They punted away to William Wright. Now Dom, watch this. He makes a great cut, gets one block, and he's off to the races down the sideline for 85 yards. And the Cats go up 41 to nothing early in the third quarter. That's not a misprint. Yikes. There were a couple bright spots for the Cougars on the day, believe it or not. Gino Simone has one of them right here, makes a juggling catch down the sideline from Marshall Lobestall pick up the first down and then takes a hit on the bench right there. And then late in the fourth quarter, Jared Karstetter makes his only grab of the game count big time, making the great one-handed catch and going 64 yards for the Cougars' only score of the day as they cut the lead down to 48-7, to which eventually was the final score. Take another look right here as Karstetter goes up and makes the play of the day. Unfortunately for the Cougs, they mustered up just 185 yards of total offense and quarterback Jeff Toole, more importantly, left the game with a knee injury. So Riley, like you mentioned, Jeff Toole leaves the game. Dad's weekend, probably be pretty cold, playing the UCLA teams have had some solid wins on the season. Do we legitimately have anything to look forward to or be excited about? I think if there is a chance for this Cougar football team to get a win, it's this game right here. Especially with the weather conditions, it's going to be cold. Those Southern California boys aren't used to playing in 30 degree weather. If there is a recipe for success, it's this weekend against UCLA. Fantastic. On a much lighter note, the University of Idaho and Boise State in-state rivalry has been taken to a whole new level recently. The two teams play each other this Saturday with the Vandals looking to beat the number six ranked Broncos for the first time since 1998. With that said, the athletic director of the University of Idaho, Rob Spear, declined to board a Horizon Air flight headed to Boise after finding out that it was painted in Boise State's blue and orange colors, with their logo painted on the tail of the plane. Instead, Spear drove 90 miles north and flew out of Spokane. Horizon Air unveiled the plane earlier this month as an ode to Boise State. Spear says he'll fly with Horizon Airlines after they paint an airplane for the Vandals. And we'll be right back with the 60 second timeout. Welcome back to Inside the Lines. Now, we have all seen players transfer schools and have even seen some athletes play multiple sports, like Jeshua Anderson, Anderson here at WSU in track and field and football for two years. Others have had more success as well, like former Duke point guard and now Syracuse quarterback Greg, Paul, Greg Paulus. We met with an athlete from Boise, Idaho, who recently transferred to play collegiate basketball, but it's a sport he spent playing the first two years of his college career, tennis, that is unique. Well, my dad started me off really young when I was about 
probably three, four years old in both sports. Um, always had a love and passion for basketball. Always also liked playing tennis. Accomplishments as far as tennis goes, had a couple state championships as a team. I had my own state championship my junior year. During his senior basketball season, Powell sustained a torn ligament in his knee that caused him to miss time on the court. The injury definitely had a huge part of my college decision because I missed out on all but five games in terms of my senior basketball season. So I wasn't really able to get looked at. After two years of successful tennis at Northern Arizona University, a change in leadership led Powell to look in another direction. My coach who recruited me, the guy who came up here, he left, he made his decision on April Fool's Day of all things to leave. And so he went back to South Africa and that led the men's program, Coachless. After that news, Powell decided to look at his first love, basketball. So at the beginning of the summer, I started playing basketball a lot, about every day for a couple hours. Also lifting weights every once in a while, not that much though. Um, kind of just stayed motivated because didn't really have anywhere to go. Knew that I had to get better because I had a large gap to make up because I haven't played for the past three years. And I was able to send out some DVDs to some coaches, pretty much uh, going over my workouts and stuff like that. Despite receiving offers from as far away as New York, Powell has decided to keep it close to home. I've made my decision to go to Corbin College over in Salem, Oregon, based on the coach there. I really liked him. I like the school's academic, uh, what the school academics have to offer in terms of my marketing degree that I'm going after. And then the team, I've contacted some of them and they all seemed pretty nice, pretty friendly people who have a goal of big things in basketball too. Powell is looking forward to his new adventure and says his goals for his time at Corbin are to lead the team to a Cascade Conference title, something the school hasn't done in over 10 years, as well as making it to the national tournament. Now let's toss it to our host Nero Threed for our weekly edition of Face Off. Hello and welcome to Face Off. I'm Nero Threat, joined by defending champion Jeff McNish and Zach Cecil. Should be a good one. Let's get it. All right, let's be honest. The Michael Vick experiment has failed thus far for the Eagles. Vick says he wants to start off somewhere next year. Where's the best fit for him, fellas? Zach. Well, you know, I've been here in Buffalo and, you know, St. Louis, Cleveland, and Washington. They've all been uh, supposedly interested. But if I were him, and I hope he's watching right now so he, he, can, he can hear my advice, uh, the team that I like is the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to need a quarterback next year. I don't think Brett Favre's coming back. And you're, you have a limited role. You, you hand the ball off to Adrian Peterson, and you throw it to Vincente Shanko or Percy Harvin. I mean, what, what more could you ask for? You're going to be on a competitive team. One of the favorites going into the next season, especially with him, I, I mean, Vikings need to give him a call. Yeah, I mean, I would agree that Brett Favre is going to retire, but I also think he's going to unretire and play for the Vikings <laughs> next year. Yeah. So that might not work out for Vic. I think a better fit is in Washington. You got Jim Zdorn uh, as the head coach. You know, he's a former QB coach. He coached Matt Hasselback up to where he is now. I think he can really work with Mike Vick and turn him into a true quarterback. I mean, that's the real problem. Is Vic's never really wanted to work. He wants to start in the NFL. He's going to have to become a true pocket passing quarterback that then can run through the pocket and try and use that to advance for more yards. He can't just run around and scramble and be a Wildcat quarterback. Yeah, I, you know, the Wildcats are gimmick. It's not going to work long term. But uh, Washington, is Jim Zorn even going to be there next year to, to coach him? You know, you, you got to look at that. And, you know, look at, look at the, the Titans, what Vince Young is, has done. He, he just hands the ball to Chris Johnson and, you know, throws, throws a little five yard, six yard pass and maybe one down the field every, you know, 10 passes. And they're 2 0 so far. So. And that's why I think Washington is a good fit, is because as surprising as it may be, Washington has the best pass defense in all of the NFL. So they're a good team. Be a good fit. I'm going to go with Zach on this one. I think a better fit for him is going to be the Minnesota Vikings. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to our next topic. The Cougs men basketball team cruised to a victory against Lewis and Clark State in an exhibition game the other night. Where do you guys have them finishing in the Pac-10 this year? Start with us, start us off again, Zach. All right, well, the Pac-10 is, is, they're down this year. You know, there's only two teams ranked and not one of them are uh, UCLA. So it's obviously an off year. 
but uh, you know, it's, and it's also a transition year, I think, for the Cougs. They have uh, all freshmen and sophomores, except for uh, one senior, Nikola Koprovica, and they have a whole new coach and a whole new offense. And uh, you know, but I, I don't think that it doesn't mean they can't have a productive year. They have uh, leaders in the right spot, and even though they're young, they have experience.